Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. On this special season of Washington Grown, we're following Washington produce around the world. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, there's just stuff happening everywhere. Breakfast, Breakfast lunch, lunch, or dinner. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm doing yeah. all, all the work over here. <laughs> That's a Tomas Deluxe. All good things are better shared, right? Cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> I can't even walk. <laughs> we got a lot to explore and a lot to do, so let's get to it. <laughs> to Washington. To Washington. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. When cherry season hits, the world goes crazy for Washington cherries. And that's because they're delicious fresh off the tree or used in yummy baked goods. In this episode, we're learning why our cherries are so amazing. Val is visiting Greg's Farms during cherry harvest. I got it in a really low gear, so all you'll do is push forward. Okay. <laughs> but now you're rolling. Hot diggity dog! And I'm making a special Mexican pastry at Feast World Kitchen in Spokane. Look at that. It's full, we flip it. It's a little package of butter love right mm -hmm. there. Then Tomas is trying a pulled pork sandwich with a special ingredient at El Fat Cat Grill. This is my half, but I'm gonna get another one. <laughs> All this and more today on Washington Grown. If you're looking to travel the world without leaving Spokane, it's time to visit Feast World Kitchen. Here, they're empowering refugee and immigrant chefs, giving them a kitchen to serve their food. And with a rotating list of chefs and so many flavors to try, you know you've got to come back hungry for more. We covered five continents. From Africa, you have five, six countries. Mediterranean, also five, six countries. Asian, we have a lot. Co-executive director Maisa Abudea wants Feast to help chefs from around the world get a good start in Spokane. Here, empowerment is the name of the game. In the beginning, Feast was like created to help those people who want to involve and be entrepreneurial in a business. Like they have the talent to be a chef. Mm -hmm. Our mission in the beginning was to help those people to open their businesses, but we don't want to push anyone right. to this step until they are really 100% yeah. ready for it. Today's chef is Maria Varela from Mexico. From the pastries to street tacos, her unique Mexican flavors cover everything a customer might be craving. She's amazing. She's just cooked with us a couple of times. The first time I was here, Fee is cooking. It was an amazing day because uh, everybody wants to meet the chef. You know, like, that means I was doing a good job. Absolutely. It was, it was, yeah, it was when amazing. they want to meet the chef, that means something. <laughs> yeah. Like, actually, it was easy. She was professional in the kitchen. Her experience here at Feast and cooking in other places in Spokane has allowed her to work toward her ultimate goal. I would love to open a place. That's one of my goals. We're trying to figure out what to do because we still have little ones. Seven How many children do you have? We have seven. Yes, we have seven. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to open a restaurant? Yes, I want to open a restaurant one day. You I have, go, you know, girl. Yes. <laughs> Don't miss later in the show when Chef Maria and I make her mom's special Mexican pastry recipe with Washington grown cherries. Kind of like a diaper. Kind of. Kind of like a diaper. <laughs> Very tasty one. <laughs> Washington grown cherries are one of my favorite treats during the summer, but did you know that there are a ton of different varieties? How many different varieties of cherries can you name? So we grow Tieton, Santina, Black Pearl, Skeena, Sweetheart, Rainier's, Aronda Rubies, Bings. Here at Greggs Farms in Arondo, John Greggs is continuing a family legacy of growing incredible cherries of all different types. There's a lot of pressure and there's not a lot of farms that are fifth generation. It's a long time. So that was your great, 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 yeah. great grandfather? Yeah. Yeah, three greats, I think. Okay, three greats. Yeah. Why is Washington such a great place to grow cherries? I think it's our little microclimates. The weather here is great. We live in a rain shadow, so we don't get a lot of rain. We're on the Columbia River, so it keeps it a little bit cooler during the day. 
and not as much wind mm -hmm. here. It's just, just a good place to grow. Now John is going to let me drive a tractor. So you want to drive this? Yeah. Okay, well, go in front of me. All right. I got it in a really low gear, so all you'll do is push forward. Okay. But now <laughs> you're rolling. Hot diggity dog! Oh my goodness. Look at that, huh? Okay! Val, you're farming. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and then you just set that brake again, like an old brake. Easy peasy. <laughs> Now I'm following the cherries to the packing shed. Ray Schmitten is the CEO and president of Bluebirds Inc., who works with Washington cherry growers to pack these fresh cherries. The way we packed 40 years ago was in a 40 pound box, 44 pound box, something like that. We called it a bushel box. Mm -hmm. We'd send it to the retailer and they would figure out what to do with it, right? They had professionals, right? They had people that knew how to handle the fruit. Right, they'd <clears throat> stage the fruit. Right, as time has gone on, it's become more apparent that the consumer wants something a little handier and the retailer wants to use less people in the store, right? Mm -hmm. So we've gone from 44 pound boxes to two and three and four pound bags. So it's changed. It's changed the way we do things. But one thing that hasn't changed is how fresh these cherries really are. They'll go right from the orchard into a semi-truck that is cold. It comes here. That next day, once they're chilled, we will pack the fruit, put it in boxes, and within the next six days, no later than two weeks, it'll be on the market. These were picked in Mattawa, Washington. So they go into a chlorine bath. Oh, okay. So they yep. still have their leaves and all the yep. extra stuff on yep. them. The pickers will pick them and they'll end up with several cherries on one. Those cherries have to be lifted up and then separated. Wow. They go through this cluster, cluster cutter. So they, this is the cluster yep. cutter. Cluster cutter. So if they're in a cluster, they get cut. Yep. I got it. That'll teach them. From here, they go through the camera system. See, now you can see each cherry is riding. See how fast they're going? Wow. You hear the air? Yes. Every little sound you hear is, is a cherry being cherry shot. Into an appropriate bin, mm -hmm. size bin. Right, right. We're packing both red cherries and Rainier's here today. It's just mesmerizing. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Stems are good. See, the stems are nice and green. That tells you they're fresh. It's an exciting time of the year for all of us. I oh mean, my God. It's, uh, but it's so intense. It's, it is very intense. It's, so these are cherries that were picked when then? Yesterday. They were picked yesterday. Yeah. And so they're being processed today yeah. and boxed. Yep, yep. And they'll go out then? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. That's amazing. Coming up, I'm making a special Mexican pastry with Chef Maria at Feast World Kitchen. Kind of like a diaper. Kind of. <laughs> kind of like a diaper. <laughs> Very tasty one. <laughs> We're back at Feast World Kitchen in Spokane. Aside from the amazing varieties of flavors coming hot from the kitchen, the reason to walk through the door is to empower talented people from all around the world. But don't take my word for it. Feast is helping to empower immigrants and refugees to feel at home in Spokane, to make a livelihood here, to hopefully help them feel welcomed in this community that we have through food and culture. Chef Maria Varela has worked with Feast doing catering and cooking through the organization. For her, it allows her to get ready for what it would be like to have a restaurant of her own. The day you're here is, is your day and you are in your own and that's, you know the rush, you know how it's everything, the pressure, everything. You get exhausted at the end of the day, but at the same time it's, it's really grateful because you hear people, it's, it was amazing, thank you Chef, it was, so that makes it like, oh okay, that is like, you know, it's worth it. One of Maria's favorite things to make comes straight from her mother. I've been in the kitchen my whole life, since yeah. day one, yeah. because my mom was a chef. What we're gonna prepare today, that's something that I learned from her. Oh, okay. It was uh, the bolivanes. Um, when she came like about four years ago, before she passed, uh, she told me like, this is something that I want you to learn and pass it to your kids yeah. one day. My mom was so, like, she said, I'm so proud of you because I think you did good. You yes. learned really good. Yeah, it's a great that's, way of honoring her. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it's really delicious. It's crunchy and creamy and fruity all at once. And I really like how the fruit 
uh, gives it kind of a, a sharper taste, and then, the, and then the cream cheese gives it that creaminess. Nice light touch to the end of the meal. It all goes together really nicely. It's, uh, it's a delight to eat. I think it's a little bit different because we made it from scratch. I think that's what it makes it special and more fresh and, uh, you know, and the love we put into it. Because yeah. I put a lot of love when I bake, when I cook. Yeah. Time to make bowl of honest filled with fresh Washington cherries. It's a piece of bread filled with uh, whatever. You can fill it with whatever you want. It, this time we're gonna fill it with cherries. Gorgeous looking cherries, and I know for a fact that these came from our friends at Stamilt, the farm. Hand-picked cherries, Washington grown. It's gonna be delicious, I think. Yes. We start by mixing some ice water into flour, then add a little sugar and salt. Tell me the reason why it has to be cold. It has to do with the butter, It has right? to do with the butter. So the butter uh, doesn't melt when, we're, when we are rolling, mm -hmm. so that way we can get the consistent and give it that, uh, this dough, the texture we need. When it bakes, it gets all the layers open. That makes it mm -hmm. delicious. <laughs> can you put some in my hand so we can get all this dough out? Thank Give your you. flour, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Once the dough is the consistency we want, we roll it out. Then it's time for the butter. So I see why these are light and crispy and delicious because we have a lot of butter. A lot of butter. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we fold the dough. I kind of like a diaper. Kind of. <laughs> kind of like a diaper. <laughs> Very tasty one. <laughs> when it's full, we flip it. A little package of butter love right mm -hmm. there. We flip it, fold it, and roll it. Then put it in the refrigerator for half an hour. You bring it out again after uh -huh. like half an hour, and you roll it again. Do it one more time. You gotta do it like four times. Four times. Yes. So a because lot of love and time goes yes. into this. Mm -hmm. Once it's been rolled and folded enough, we cut the dough into squares and roll it out one last time. Now it's time to add the cherries, which have been cooked down with sugar, cinnamon, and lime. We use water to seal the dough, brush an egg wash on, sprinkle on some sugar, and put it in the oven for 10 minutes. I didn't expect them to be so puffy, I guess. They look That's, awesome. Yeah. Oh, no way. Look at all those layers. Mm-hmm. That's a good part of this. <laughs> yes. Oh, these are delicious. What I love with this is they're not too sweet. Awesome. I love the crunch and the flakiness of the dough. And the cherries are delicious. You still taste the fruit, mm -hmm. and you taste it all. Like, you you know, do. Like, it's not blended, like, it goes together really mm -hmm. good. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I love it. To get the recipe for Chef Maria's Cherry Bowl of Honest, visit wagrown.com. Here in Orlando at the Global Produce and Floral Trade Show, it felt a little like being in an oversized grocery store with tons of recognizable brands, colorful displays, and delicious foods we've all come to know and love. Now I may be a bit biased, but I think the best was the Washington Grown Booth. Here all kinds of Washington brands came to Florida to share the bounty of our state with the rest of the world. We love to come out to all of these shows. That's when we are here in Florida, and we just like to tell people about Washington potatoes. We actually have some of the best potatoes in Washington, and again, those specialty potatoes. Folks are looking for those reds, those yellows. Right. The and then, purples. Yeah, the purples, and the french fries. Let's see what else Washington State has to offer. A lot of times we don't see these people that we do business with very often. Uh, most of it's done over the phone or over the computer, so a uh, convention like this gives us this opportunity to meet with these people occasionally in person. It's a great opportunity to, to network together. The asparagus in Washington is strongly considered to be the best in the world okay. because of the volcanic soil and the climate that we live in. Are there other asparagus uh, commissions here? I've talked to the local people here, like just in these booths here, about their asparagus. It's a neighborly community, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I'd burn them down if I could. But... <laughs> I try, uh, try to be neighborly. We're here uh, to talk about turf grass seed and, and you know, hopefully make some contacts. So 90% of the Kentucky bluegrass is grown in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. And a lot of that is grown in Washington State. So the seed itself, yeah, is being exported all over the world. Next up is Landon Rowley of Rowley and Hawkins Fruit Farms. Today, he's talking about their tart cherries. You can, you'll find that in your pies, you'll find that in your pop tarts or ice creams or juices. That's most commonly your flavoring for medicines and other different things. Ah, so that's okay. when you when you see cherries on something, most of the time, it's tart cherries. Okay, tart works. cherry juice, concentrate right here. Woo! And then there's the cherry. Mmm. Wow. So there is about 60 cherries that you just ate. That's just 60 cherries right there? Yeah. Just 60. Just 60. 
I've been able to talk with potential customers from all over the world, from Japan to Korea, Taiwan. You meet so many fun people, and the fact that everyone is excited about potatoes makes me excited about what I do. A lot of the big name brands from all over the U.S. are here. And so for us, it's really cool to be part of that. I think making those contacts to be able to sell our products, you know, Washington, again, produces over 300 crops and we've got to find buyers for them. That message of eat local, it, there's more to it. It's about knowing your producer and knowing where your food is coming from. And at a show like this, we're able to make that connection. Coming up, Tomas is trying a pulled pork sandwich with a special ingredient. This is my half lip. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying Chef Laurent's Asian Chicken and Cherry Lettuce Wrap. Mexican food, Asian curries, delicious burgers. If you crave it, they've got it. Here at El Fat Cat Grill in Kennewick, robust flavors and mouthwatering dishes create long lines of hungry customers just waiting for something special. And today, I'm talking with the Fat Cat himself, owner Felix Sanchez. So the name, it was really my sisters, you know, they were like, you know, I'm a, I was always eating, you know, and cooking and everything. And, and they just called me, you know, Fat Cat. They were like, but you're not fat. I bet I could eat. So just like eat and cook and eat and cook, right. right, you know? The key to the amazing flavors coming out of this kitchen, surprise, surprise, it's the Washington grown produce. In Washington, we're known kind of for cherries and apples and yeah. everything, right? And I live kind of out in the country, so gotcha. I'm surrounded by cherry farms, peach farms, apple. As soon as harvest comes, they're like, hey, let's go. And the fat cat isn't kidding around either. Today, we've got a pulled pork sandwich topped with Washington apples and sweet cherries. Just look at this. Look at the cherries that we've Fresh got cherries. in that sandwich here. Yes, sir. It's pork al yeah, adobado, right? Okay. But I charred everything, so it gives it the charred flavor okay, to nice. it. So it's more like a pulled pork, and then we did a, che a Bing cherry mole for okay. it. Okay. And then a Granny Smith apple slaw. Let's try Let's this. Let's dig in. Let's see what this is all about, Felix. All right. All right, here we go. Cheers, Cheers brother. All right. That pork is juicy. As all get up. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Those cherries are perfect in this sandwich. Perfect pop of sweetness. Sweetness and a little tartness in it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. This is my half, but yeah. I'm going to get another one. <laughs> Let's see what the people of Kennewick think about cherries on a pulled pork sandwich. That's super good. I'd order two of these if I could. <laughs> That's a perfect mix. You get like the, the meat flavor. And then you get like the sweetness of the fruit too. It starts out sweet, you get the hit of the cherries, and then that pulled pork just comes in. Nice smoky flavor, that barbecue sauce and the coleslaw coming in. It is very juicy. Probably the most juicy pulled pork I've had in my entire life. <laughs> it is entire life! That's some good pulled pork right there. Nice. Isle Fat Cat has the best pulled pork ever. Okay, you know what? You're the second person to tell me that today. <laughs> I gotta go on for another bite. Though. Do it! I don't want to stop you. <laughs> Hey, this is a half, huh? That's right. <laughs> no, I was like, I get a full one. <laughs> yes, you yeah, can. All right. There's just nothing quite like sitting down with a big bag of juicy Washington cherries during the summer. But did you know that people all over the world celebrate Washington's cherry season? Today, I'm down in Florida at the Global Produce and Floral Trade Show, learning why Washington cherries are causing such a buzz. The cherries grown in Washington are unique because we have such a wonderful, high nitrogen, mountainous region, and it's a unique microclimate. BJ Thoromain is the manager of the Washington State Fruit Commission, and he's well aware that our cherries are special and that they're celebrated all over the world. In Washington alone, we produce close to 200,000 metric tons of cherries each year. Our strongest marketing region for cherries is the greater Asian area, including China, Taiwan, Korea. The reason that is is because they don't grow or they can't grow cherries in okay. Asia. My name is Panayotis, or just Yotis, okay. yeah. and I'm here to source the best fruit from Washington. As a representative of Taiwan, Yotis is here to continue the trade relationship between Taiwan and U.S. producers like Washington cherry growers. We don't have cherries in Taiwan, so we have to source from other places over the world. We find the cherries from Washington is 
perhaps the best, one of the best in the world. A lot of our cherries end up in Korea. A big market for us is also China. Willie So says with the Sage Fruit Company, he knows that one of the main reasons people get so excited about cherries is that there's such a small window for them to be sold. I think it's one of those commodities that you can still only get a couple times out of the year. It's one of those things that you have to plan for. You know, you're okay. not going to have it all season long. Right. And people are waiting for them. All the way across North America and Mexico City, the excitement for Washington cherries is just as high. Juan Carlos Moriera represents Northwest Cherry Fruit Growers in Mexico. His task is simple and focused. Make sure people know when cherry season is approaching so no one misses out. We have a PR campaign uh, where we declared the week of the 4th of July Mexican National Cherry Week. Okay, that's good to know. Well, yes, with Northwest Cherries, we do the circus approach. The circus comes into town yeah. and stays in town only for a few weeks. With cherries, we're talking about from eight to ten weeks a year. Okay. It's truly seasonal. Right. So we have to tell everybody, the circus is coming, the circus is coming, <laughs> all our cherries are going to be here. Yeah. It's a good way to do it. The circus is coming. The circus is coming. And cherries are the stars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, our state alone is a wonderful state for growing agriculture, and if you're the type of person that likes to have locally grown fruit, potatoes, produce, you're going to be really happy because we grow the best in the world right here in our little corner of the world. We are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, and I am with my lovely co-tasters today <laughs> where we get to try some wonderful food, some recipes, and Chef Laurent Zarati, thank good to you. See you yeah, always good to yes. see you. And Tomas, great to see you Thank as you. well. I hope you're hungry. I know, <laughs> I, know. I know. I hope what a tough job. we're all hungry. <laughs> yes. And these recipes have been developed by you, yes. Laurent. So that's okay. great. Thank you so much you're for doing welcome. that. You're yeah. Yes, if it's not good, just blame it on just me. Just blame <laughs> it on that's you. Fine. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> and, I'll see. you know, this season is all about international cuisine and experiencing, you know, different cultures and how Washington food plays a role in all that and uh, it's just been so fun to see you know where our food ends up uh, but also you know where you can find international flavors yes. in your town yeah and you we, are, we are very lucky here in town to have a feast world kitchen yeah i think it's a great a non-profit uh, restaurant uh, that are that is run by by true yeah. international cook Absolutely. mostly refugee we all eat in our world, right? We uh, try Absolutely. to eat uh, yeah. at least once a day. Yeah. And, and food is the mostly, mm -hmm. maybe the only union we have. And it, mm -hmm. it groups and it, it makes us close together, yeah. right? Around the table. And it's, it's a so great cool. concept, isn't right. it? Yes. That I can just go and experience Ethiopian food yeah. one month and then yeah. I can go to the same place, but now I'm experiencing um, El Salvadorian. Exactly. Yeah. Or yes. Egyptian. Yes. I, it's just so, it's so cool. And original, yeah. no, I mean, yes. mm -hmm. truly authentic. Authentic, yeah. Authentic. Yes. yeah. Mm. So what are we going to make well, today? Well, we decided maybe to not do a dessert with cherry. It's a chicken and cherry uh, lettuce wrap. Ooh, so that sounds Asian really good. flavors, yeah. and uh, all together with uh, some crunchy uh, nuts in there. Oh, I'm and, excited oh, it's for that. Be good. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, our team is back in the kitchen right now, putting it together. Let's see how they make it.
right. Well, that looks amazing. That's, that's and now it's gorgeous. here in front of us. Very well presented. But better so you eat this, so though, like... Yes, we're going to make a mess. I'm just going to roll it like we a burrito right here. The, the textures are great. Mixing that chicken and the crunch of the nuts and the green onions. Textures is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. It's good. Very crunchy. And the sauce is. Is, is something I would expect. It's got that nice... Asian tang, it's, it's, it's very good. I want more cherries though. Mm -hmm. I want more cherries. But what a fun way though. Wow. To get cherries into a yeah. dish that's not sweet. Yeah. Exactly. Savory I love that. Dish. It's good to challenge ourselves, huh? Take something that we typically would think of sweet, like an apple or a cherry, and add mm -hmm. it into something a bit more savory. Nice job. Thank that's you good. very much. Good job to the chef in the kitchen mm -hmm. at Second Alves. Yeah. I love that. I love our cooking team. I think they have fun putting these they together. Do. I know. So if you want to try this recipe, just go to our website at wagrown.com and, and give it a try. We'd You'll love to hear it. about it. Like yeah. if you follow us on social media or something, give us a comment, let Delicious. us know. To get the recipe for Chef Laurent Zerati's Asian chicken and cherry lettuce wrap, visit us at wagrown.com. Whether eaten fresh or baked into something sweet, cherries are always delicious, so make sure you grab a bag when you see them in the store. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time.